Since the dawn of man, an age-old question has always remained. Which is the best Mega Bloks, Mega Constructs, Halo, Blind Bag series? And we're going to answer it in as much detail as possible today. I'm joined with Brian from Toa of Ultimate Doom. Hi, I'm Brian, and I promise, Simon, I won't tell that thing that you told me off camera that you said it would ruin you. I won't use it as uh, blackmail. Brian, that's between you and me, okay? We're here today to run down every single blind bag series. We'll put the pictures on the screen and we'll give our thoughts and opinions on every single one. What is the best figure of each one? The worst figure of each one? What could be improved on each series? And really also what we look for in a series. And I guess that's where we can start it today. What do you look for in a blind bag series, Brian? Playmobil. Playmobil? Yes. I thought we were talking about Playmobil. What's Halo? Yeah, we're talking about the, the, the top 10 Playmobil figures. Oh, okay. Uh, my top 10 is the night one. F uh, Fireman. Fireman man. Fi Fireman, yes, yeah. that's the best one. Um, well, so uh, the way I see it is people collect blind bags for a few different reasons. To army build, collect the full series, only one of each figure, have a series that sort of are all the same color and work in line in a diorama together. I mean, what do you collect blind bags for? Well, it was for different reasons at the start. Usually it was just I was grabbing whatever, but mainly I just wanted at least one so I could say, hey, I have one, that then everything else would be extra. Mm. Series 9, where I just decided, you know what, I'm going to try and get one each and just stop there. Because originally I just wanted a whole bunch of Covenant things, because I, I like having more bad guys yeah. than good guys, yeah. because it makes it look more intimidating. And the good guys come out on top, they're more heroic, because if they take over, then it's not going to look like a heroic victory. Yeah, I guess I was similar at first. Like, at the, at the very beginning when I was young, I would only collect, like, buy one or two of each set. But that very quickly phased out when I realized that I wanted to collect this properly. I remember when Series 1 came about, I only got a few of them. But then by Series 3, I was making sure I had everything from each set. It's only been recent years that I've started army building properly. And when you're buying one of every set, you don't really need to army build that much of particular ones. You look at, like, the grunt conscript that comes in the new Halo Infinite sets. There's so many of him in so many sets. It's like, do you really need to buy so many blind bags? So let's dive right in with series one. And I'm very excited, particularly for the Mega Bloks figures, because this is going to just be raw nostalgia for me. I'm sure for you too. And we've got series one to begin with. Fun fact, the very first figure I ever got from Mega Bloks was a series one figure. And it was an AC figure as well. And I remember, Ooh. I know, I got the AC Spartan to begin with. And fun fact, I bought this figure. I had never really been introduced to it. I'd only just started playing Halo 3 after maybe like a year. And I bought this blind bag and I got the AC immediately. And actually I thought to myself in the shopping center, I don't want this AC figure. I wanted one of the cool Spartans. Like, I don't want this one that's translucent. I don't care. I was with one of my friends, and at first we hatched a plan that I was going to take it back and say that it was missing its leg and get another one. Like, after maybe half an hour, it warmed to me and I decided to keep it. You should never just do that kind of nonsense, but I was young. And then... Yeah, I was hovering over the dislike button and my know, fist was clenching, I but I let it slide. I know, well, well, I, I got better, okay. I, I, back then, I was a kid and I was like, I don't want this, I'm gonna return it. But I, I got better morals pretty quickly. Let's talk about the best figure in this series. 3, 2, 1, obviously it's Hayabusa. No, no questions, right? Well, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> it, for me, it's the green elite that I really wanted to get, and I was stupid because I would be able to find the elites very easily. All I would have to do was look at two different codes codes in a pack and I would have the green elite mm. but even though I knew about the codes and I knew about the elites for some reason I didn't even put two and two together oh, yeah. even with the energy sword see I didn't code figures for a long long time maybe until like series four Five or six. No, series four. No. Maybe even later. I don't know. I didn't code for a long time. I would always just feel the packets. Hayabusa was definitely the top of my list. I mean, Hayabusa was such a legendary armor set in Halo 3. You had to do so much to get it. So I was really excited to get that figure. The green Spartan with the energy sword was also awesome, but I remember the green Spartan came in the mongoose as well, so it wasn't really that desirable. Certainly the green pilot is a cool figure with that enormous SMG. I mean, what is going on with that SMG? Well, that's like one of the inflatable balloon weapon mm. things that they give to kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it truly is. It's ridiculous. Try dual wielding two of them, you're not going to have a good time. The value for money figure might be the flame marine, because the, the flamethrower comes in like four pieces. 
It's a really cool one to build. Overall, it was a solid starter series. I remember that Red Marine was also really cool because they just released the Red Combat Unit in America and I couldn't get hold of that, so the Red Marine was a nice one. Yeah, the Red well, Marine is pretty uh, cool. He's ketchup flavored. <laughs> yeah, the Red Marine is ketchup flavored. That's a really great point. Maybe that makes You got him ketchup win, and figure. mustard marines right there. One thing I do like about series 1 is I like how well rounded the colors are because you do have quite a bit of green and you do have purple elite that goes well and integrates with all the armies that you already had at the time. Mm. But you know, of course, they would give you some extra colors, but everything would feel subtle at this point. Everyone mm. would fit into uh, all the set. I love how the pilot is uh, being introduced in this line because it means that you could take out the Spartan pilot from your mainline sets like the Aerial Ambush and you mm. can just put in the pilot. Very good point, yeah. And really, that's what Halo Infinite is hitting home with, that like all the sets and all the figures, they seem to be from the same battle. They all fit really well together. So yeah, all of these figures could be used in existing sets, which is nice. So overall, Series 1 knocks it out of the park to begin with. It rolls into Series 2 quite nicely. Series 2 is mostly color swaps of Series 1, which makes sense because what most people don't think about is the production costs of making new molds, which you can see all the time in Mega Bloks and Mega Constructs. They're making strategic decisions to implement new pieces at different points. That's why like the Elite and the Grunt from Halo Infinite are technically combat evolved designs. They don't want to, you know, spend all the money on new molds straight away. The color swaps do include the Hayabusa, two Spartans, a Marine and a Flame Marine, but we do get the brand new Root and Flight Elite. This might have been the first set that the Flight Elite came out in, definitely that year. I really love that copper color. It's really cool. Oh, I love it. It's a brilliant color. I want that uh, battle unit just for the copper elites. Mm. Oh yeah, that was a good battle unit. What Mega Bloks always did very well in the early days was the Brutes and the Elites always had very nice paint applications on their chest. And you can see that, especially on that Brute. That Brute, I always say, has some of the best paint apps in Mega Bloks. It's really nice. That belt has so many different colors. The AC Flame Marine, do you have any thoughts on that? Kind of funny how they put, uh, it's still a rare, but uh, it was it a rare? No, it was a common. Mm. Uh, another Flame Marine to kind of trick the audience into thinking, oh, is this the active camo one? Yeah, exactly. I bought a lot of Flame Marines. They turned out to not be active camo. Yeah, it was pretty funny. The Pink Hayabusa, my girlfriend really likes that figure. She's got it on her desk. Again, they have the question mark figure, but this time the question mark figure is just a Marine, so it makes sense. But then again, the Marine is the common figure. The question mark didn't really make sense until they actually implemented Chase figures. Series 3 continues to build on everything Series 2 was doing, but I think quite a bit better. They introduced- I like how the Brute has something to counter with it, by the way. I, the, mm. One thing I like about Series 2 is you had the Brute and the Marine as equal. Here, it felt like the Brute, strangely enough, was a counter to the Spartan, because you had the Brute Prowler, and there were a couple of other various sets that would give you enough Brutes yeah. and then the Orange Spartan. It was kind of weird how that happened. By the way, I have to mention with Series 3, I bought this in its entirety in the first run. I found every code, and I bought one of each. Nice. And then for some reason, I ended up with four each of the rares. Uh, not the ultra rares, but I got the Flight Elite and the CQB. When I had the original Battle Skate, I remember the CQB was at the center of the battle on a mongoose. I love that CQB. My absolute favorite in this set is two grunts. You get two grunts in one bag. I used to think well, that was just the greatest thing because grunts are so dispensable. Like they, you need to have a lot on your battlefield, especially to like equal out the UNSC versus Covenant. So having two and including a plasma grenade as well, that I thought that was a great treat. Yeah, they both have different weapons, but what I really love about this series, and that's give you equal Covenant, equal UNSC. Oh. Because even though the Elite is the ultra rare and you won't get it as much, you have the Grunt to counter that. Mm. Most waves are just mostly Spartans or Marines. Mm. And as cool as that is, you know, I'm not complaining about those specific figures. If you just grab and pull whatever you want out of that, you're gonna get mostly UNSC yeah. and that might get tiring if you're trying to get more Covenant stuff, yeah. and you just might not even figure out that, oh, I got too many UNSC and not enough Covenant. Mm. That's one thing that I really love about this. And if you see, like, I, I don't know, I think when this set came out, the AC Elite might have been the most chased figure at the time of all Mega Bloks. I mean, that Elite is phenomenal. I've said it many times before, I don't understand when they make AC figures that are not an AC character in the games. Why do we have a brand new AC Brohammer? It makes no sense to me. But an AC Elite 
is perfect. It's so cool to have, and because like AC elites are just such a large part of the Halo campaign experience. They should do more AC elites. They should. I, I, I'm yeah. just looking back, and I don't think of too many of them. No, there aren't that many. I think this series three was definitely the best series that they've made so far. I don't know if you'd agree with me on that, but I think series four was great. They kept on getting better and better. And can you tell me why series four is my favorite? Yellow ODST. Yellow ODST. That ODST is so beautiful. I used to love that ODST. And I'd buy a lot of that ODST to paint with Warhammer paints. I thought it was so great for customizing. We have the Arctic Pelican Pilot, which was cool because a lot of Arctic sets were coming out at the time. Crimson Flight Elite, which is almost identical to the Crimson Flight Elite that comes in one of the Armory packs. Almost identical. And then they just released the brand new Mold Elite. I think, you know, when you look back, the original Elite was a little too skinny, and they really fleshed him out with this chunky Elite. Oh, I didn't boy. like the heads of those original Elites. The, the heads were the worst parts of those figures. Yeah, and actually, these Elites are quite notorious, and the Flight Elites as well. Quite notorious, they had a ball joint that was, like, glued into the body with, like, a long rod, and sometimes that rod would become disconnected. What I love about this series is pretty much the same thing that I said about Series 1, is that everything seems well-rounded. Mm. You have a nice selection of different things. All the bad guys were in the common series, so you can, you know, grab yeah, them and, and that would be fine. The ODST and the EVA seems like a very special tree, and that feels perfect to put in the rare, because, mm. you know, with the Marine and the Pilot, those don't belong in rares. Yeah. And then Cortana happened. Uh, yes, Cortana. Cortana Series 4 is by far the best Cortana we've ever had. The Infinity Cortana? Terrible. It looks off. This Cortana, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, I That's like Cortanas I of every kind, but whatever, if you want to be judgmental. I love that Cortana. I think it's fantastic. And the base plate it came on, a beautiful microchip. And there were rumors that some boxes of Series 4 didn't even have Cortanas in. There was a supermarket called Morrison's near our house, and they stocked a lot of Series 4. And Sam and I used to go there and do vlogs on the SS Motion. It was some of our most popular videos at the time, looking for Cortana. He would find, like, three of this girl. I would never find her. And then I told my friend Joseph about Cortana once, and then the next day he came into maths class, slapped a Cortana down, and just had a smirk on his face. Like, everyone could find it other than me, and it was such an obtain- like, it was such a desirable figure. And immediately you'd know, because it would be like a big base plate that made up the Cortana data chip, you'd immediately know if it was the, the, the right one. You like the Copper Brute as well? Yes, I, I was so surprised because we normally have like blue or purple uh, Brutes and then Copper just came out of nowhere. It was a, a exceptional figure. I mean, the whole, like, the whole series, so many new molds, so much promise that ODST, EVA, Cortana, everything was fantastic about this series. And then Mega Bloks kind of had a problem. How do you go from having series four Cortana as a chase figure to the next series? Like, how do you up Cortana? I think they did. If we move on to series five, standard figures, uh, how many have we got? Eight figures? But where's the AC figure, Brian? I don't know, because I forgot to do anything about that. No, 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 I didn't mean it literally because you hadn't provided You were pictures. calling me out, I know it. Oh my goodness. I No, I wasn't. What Mega Bloks did was they introduced chase figures for the very first time. And this was the perfect way to combat Cortana because Cortana was such a great figure. It was red, blue, and smoke gray, and they were all really fantastic figures. And the beauty of them was they weren't advertised anywhere. And that was really the old excitement about Mega Bloks blind bags and really what they just miss out on nowadays. Don't have that excitement of finding out that there's a new figure you didn't even know about. My favorite was definitely that smoke Spartan with the shotgun. I thought it was just so beautiful. And let's talk about series five in general. We have a lot of new molds entering the mix. Well, not a lot, but a couple. We've got the Flood Combat Elite. And this is the what Air I call the Spartan. Flood Wave. The Flood Wave. And there's a little kind of story that I just hit on with Series 4 and 5. The Series 5 Flood form is in the Blue Combat Elite, which was in Series 4. Oh! So the Elite got infected between Series 4 and 5. I like that. And the Flood Elite was also, it was a nice color scheme. They included, like, that Flood color running through the arms and the legs of the figure, so it looked a lot better than just popping it on a standard figure. Yeah, you've got an Arctic CQB, pretty standard. Blue Marine, standard. Purple Elite, eh. 
and then the new mold grunt, which I think divided people quite a lot at the time. Bigger and had way more posability than the original grunts, but it was still small. The new, new mega construct super articulation grunts, they're almost the same size as Marines, and I know that divides people quite a lot. I'm actually okay with it, honestly. I'm okay with it, yeah. The main figure that was just meh in this set was releasing another green Spartan. I know it was slightly different color, but like, eh. Like, yeah, I, 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 don't I don't think it had that. the black wash was the thing. No, it was slightly different. And they had improved some paint apps, yeah, but it was pretty much the same figure. Although the, it did come with the new shotgun. Ah, yeah, the new shotgun, that's true. So did the smoke gray figure as well, the chase figure. The new mold needler as well, I think that had probably been around for a little bit. Marine, we now had a mask less marine as well. You could see his face, which is pretty cool. Sort of bronze goggles. I thought they always looked really nice. I'll just say this for uh, Series 5. I absolutely love that pink air assault. I, yeah, I like the pink air assault too. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else as a collector have noticed, but like Googling old Mega Bloks Halo sets is really difficult. I don't know why they don't include pictures of these things on Google anymore, but like you can't find old chase figures by just Googling it. That was the difficulty with me. So if some of the photos aren't the best quality, you know why. We finished series five and they had introduced the chase figures, which were a really cool addition. And then we were rolling into series six. Now, if you were Mega Bloks, you'd just done three AC Spartans for series five. You're gonna do three AC Elites for series six. That just makes sense, right? And these ones, I actually think they were even cooler of a set because they were all the exact same with the exact same weapon, just different colors. So they kind of made like a cool set of three. I love collecting these at first. I just did a trade with Miseria Armory. I sent him a set of those three elites and they were awesome. And you would think that they were as difficult to find as the AC Flame Marine in series two because there is an identical elite in series six. They came usually with an additional figure, right? It was very unclear what was going on. Sometimes you would buy a blind bag and you would just get the chase figure. Sometimes you would buy a blind bag and you would get the chase figure and a standard figure. And it was very strange at the time, like that you were you were finding these huge bags that were crammed full of two figures. They were awesome. Did you ever find one of those with both figures in? Yeah, uh, one of them that I got, I never got the purple one, but uh, I think it was the green elite, or maybe it was both. I did get the desert marine. I love getting that uh, desert marine uh, in addition to the transparent elites because it's like, these are cool, but they're more like a novelty thing. And then the desert mm -hmm. marine is something that you can actually put with the other figures. I mean, they definitely are a novelty. It kind of makes sense that they're like halfway through Turning on their AC unit, it is a purple elite that has just turned on its AC unit and it's phasing to full AC. That would have made more sense if you'd included three elites. Maybe you'd have included a half AC cyan elite and a full AC elite. So you had like the three transitioning in the set. And then we'll talk about the figures. Finally, we have a jackal in blind bags that we can collect. And it was actually a pretty detailed one. Definitely not as detailed as the one, say, in the short sword, but it was still a good looking figure. You had the EOD and the Grenadier, which were brand new molds, and Noble Six. We were moving into what I would probably call the golden age of Mega Bloks, which was Halo Reach. They released Mega Bloks during Halo Wars, right? So they'd missed Halo 1, 2, and 3. They were going into that era. They had a good run with ODST, but Reach is when the Halo community blew back up and they released like an enormous amount of sets per year and into Halo 4 as well, I guess. But we've got a lot of Halo Reach molds showing up in this set. They're awesome. I loved that uh, Noble 6 yellow elite, that Mark 5B. Really There's cool a funny figure. thing about that Mark 5B is that uh, when I got a little bit into McFarland, my first mm. figure was the yellow Mark V B with the shotgun too. I used to love posing my identical mega blocks with my mega constructs. But I had a Hayabusa with the, that were identical between the two. Yeah, the Jackal was awesome. The EOD was like, they were going into that era of making loads of Covert Ops sets around ODST's time. So that Covert Ops uh, EOD is really cool. The Grunt is nothingness, it's whatever. It's almost identical to the previous series. All in all a good set and the Marine I goes very well with the desert combat unit and a lot of the other desert sets. So I had bought loads of series six. I, th mm. I think series six is the most figures I've had because they were on sale for about $3. They were nice. originally like three something, which mm. isn't a lot. I have like six grunts, five jackals, three marines, two EVAs, two Mark Bs, two wow. science Spartans. And uh, of course I have the grenadier and the EOD, but I've only got one each. The one thing I'll note that we're not really touching on in this video is weapons. You know, you're getting all these weapons in all 
all the other sets, it's it's pretty cool that like they certainly vary the weapons more and more as Mega Bloks evolves into Mega Constructs. With the new sets, you barely get identical weapons in any blind bag series. So they were slowly phasing out that idea of having the same weapons, and it definitely makes it easier to feel which figure is in a blind bag. But in series six, they all share a weapon. The confusing part that they tried to trick you is that they would give a common figure and a rare figure, or a yeah. rare figure and an ultra rare, yeah. the same weapon. We've just passed series six. Mega Bloks uh, were getting a little drunk at this point, you know? They were getting <laughs> a little, <laughs> they were getting a little mad with power. There were some late nights at the office, there were a couple of parties, and they were like, why don't we just put like 20 figures in a series? Why don't we just do that? Why don't we put like 20 in the set? <laughs> I mean, literally, what is going on in this series? Like series seven, what happened? Why did this happen? Now, they're not so bad many. figures, but it was a little intimidating. I only bought a few because I was like, I'm never going to be able to collect the whole list. This was just nuts. I know why this happened. Mega blocks were rolling in the dough. They had so much money at this point. Like, seriously, if you look at the lineup, like, Reach was definitive for Mega Bloks, but then when they hit hard with Halo 4, Microsoft had got an enormous amount of backing for that game. They hit hard with so many sets. They wanted a really cool blind bag series, so they made... 16 figures. I think equally Simon and Brian just got drunk with power and miscounted the figures. Uh, there are 14. We, we get a contact drunk from seeing this. We just got too excited, yeah. It's pretty wild. There is a big higgledy-piggledy set of figures here. There are two of the same grunt but different colors. Let's break down first with I guess our favorite figure. Mine's definitely that tan ODST. How about you? I uh, don't know, but I really like how flashy that EOD is. The Marine Mark 5 B, CQB, I guess the ODST were all in kind of the same color scheme. But yeah, that yellow EOD is just, hello, I'm just gonna be yellow for some reason. We've got a Flood Marine, that's awesome, especially with an assault rifle that's straight out of all the Halo games. Zealot for the first time, Storm Grunt, brand new Master Chief mold in blue. Oh wow, that, I mean, that's a crazy set. And then in terms of weapons, we got some Sentinel Beams, they made sure to have two different colored Sentinel Beams, which was pretty rad. And then a load of assault rifles, some rail guns, Whew, that's a lot to take in, honestly. If you look at my Halo 3 ODST new Mombasa diorama, I have so many of those jump pack brutes. I used to love them. Diamond, you're not gonna like me. The image doesn't show the, uh, the uh, security. Wait, so there Oops, was 16. Again, I Wait, guess. so there was 16. <laughs> So we were so, right. So ha -ha. We were right when we were drunk with power. There are 20 in this set. For some reason, the picture Brian has doesn't include two of the figures. I don't even know what's going on right now. Well, we missed out the commando and we missed out the security. Right, so the security also fits into that color scheme. All right, we need to move past this series as quick as possible. Let's have a look at the AC figures. We've got a yellow, orange, green, and blue. They're all different molds, which is pretty cool. It took me a long time and honestly quite a bit of money to get hold of this whole series, especially the chase figures. I believe some of the chase figures never came out in the UK. I don't know what happened at Mega Bloks. There were some late nights, there were some things said, and somehow they decided to make a series with 20 figures. I think it was because it was the 10th anniversary of Halo at the time. That would make sense if yeah, it was. Yeah, because we had the, the 10th anniversary sets coming out. When Series 8 came along, you know, there was a, there was a PR meeting at Mega Bloks. The manager said, okay, I like, I like your attitude, but we need to slow down a little bit. We need to we need to strip it back to its original set. Honestly, I remember on the forums, people weren't even mad that it went back to like six or eight figures. The Series 7 was cool, but everybody was a little anxious that they couldn't even get the whole set. Moving breezily on to Series 8, we've got another cracking series, and you could tell it was the start of Halo 4. This is basically just a Halo 4 set. The Spartan Soldier, the Master Chief in purple, the Storm Elite, and the Watcher and the Crawler. The I first the time Watcher we got Prometheans in this line too. Yeah, and I thought the Watcher was particularly nice, especially with the rod that makes it levitate. The wings were sort of like this translucent effect. The Crawler, Epic Edition. I mean, it is a really nice set. And that Air Assault is in a color scheme that we'd had a few sets that year in that similar color scheme. Yes, it was in the multi-pack with those blue commandos. Dare I say average set. I mean, nothing stood out to me when this set came out apart from the Prometheans. I army built the Prometheans and the Storm Elite quite a lot, but the Spartans, Halo 4's wave was so massive in scale that these figures kind of 
just seemed like a grain of sand on the beach, you know what I mean? I was buying so many sets that I, I didn't really need these figures. But the Prometheans were epic. I think the standout figure was the purple Spartan. I had to get that later. Also, that soldier cool. was really... I mean, it was kind of cool, but also uninteresting because I feel like we had something very similar to that in a different set. Mm. Well, we'd had a lot of those covert ops figures at the time. It is surprisingly difficult to find out pictures confirming exactly what chase figures were in each set. We have pictures of the orange AC Watcher, the smoke gray AC Zealot Elite, and the green AC Spartan Recruit. I remember the orange Watcher was particularly my favorite. Watchers are always phasing in and out of places. It made sense to me that there was an AC one. We've got series nine. Now series nine is the most interesting for me. I was the very first person in the world to find Series 9, and I was the first one to even find pictures of it, let alone figures in the store. It was pretty interesting. There's a toy store in England called The Entertainer. I was literally walking through the ent- and like, I keep up to date with my Mega Bloks constantly. And I was walking through this toy store in a different town. I was on holiday somewhere, I can't remember where. I just saw Series 9. And to be like the top of my game with Mega Bloks, and then to see a blind bag series that I had no idea existed. Yeah, it just snuck up on everyone. Nobody knew yeah. about it. It just happened. Yeah, I, I think exactly. the reason why is because it was supposed to come out later in the year, but because they were doing the new articulation, they brought it in early. So what happened was I took pictures. Of, I mean, obviously I bought the whole box, but I took pictures of these things and I sent them to my friend Anthony, who used to be the one that organized Blocks Fest with me. And he was in direct communication with Andrew Sparks, you know, the guy at Mega Blocks at the time. And he sent the picture to Andrew Sparks and then Sparks replied and then called Anthony to tell me that under no circumstances am I allowed to post this picture anywhere online. And I had to just stay quiet about it while Mega Bloks scrambled for their PR team to put out some press on it. And then they said that the second the press came out, I could release a video unpackaging them. It was pretty exciting at the time. So definitely a standout series for me. A pretty damn good series as well. Just before new articulation, but we got some cool standout figures. A Flame Marine seems very outdated at this point to have in blind bag series. But it's nice to see it in orange, I will say that. Spartan Recon in green, I do like that one. Alpha Crawler, I think. Alpha Crawler? Yeah, we got the Promethean Alpha Crawler, that Grunt Ultra is cool, and then we've got the Brute Stalker, epic figure, and the AC Skirmisher. I love half AC figures. Basically because all AC that isn't on Elites or Spartans is a little weird, so it's cool that it's sort of like trans between AC and not comes with a purple needler which would be strange for an AC figure but they've done it well to have the arms like half phasing so it makes sense that the gun has not phased yet it's like moving up the body so I do really like that effect I love the the smoke effect I like the choice of figures but the unfortunate part was most of the bad guys were the rares and the ultra rares yeah still kind of tricky with that but I do like how the CIO which only came out in two sets this yeah. and the uh, the siege bike you could yeah. kind of see that counter the Brute Stalker. I managed to get all the main figures. I never got any of the gummy ones. And then we've got the AC figures. Some of my favorites, honestly. We've got the Scout in sort of the mold of Spartan Palmer in red, Scattershot in hand. And then we've got a Grunt and a Crawler. I really thought that the Blue AC Crawler and the AC Orange Watcher worked really well together. I thought these were some really cool chase figures. I love how bright the Grunt was. It's like putting it in a floodlight and, and then just seeing it light up. And that brings us to the end of the numbered series of Mega Blocks. I mean, that is series one to nine reviewed. But Simon, what about the other waves? That's a good question, Brian. Yeah, you're damn right, Brian. That brings us to the end of series one to nine. That's gonna be part one of Toa of Ultimate Doom and The Domain's Blind Bag Review. We have just gone through series one to nine, reviewed all the figures, and in part two, we'll start on what I thought would be, uh, like, I don't understand why they didn't do series 10. I thought that would have been perfect, but they went to series alpha, and it's the perfect way to transition into new articulation. So next time we're gonna be talking all things new articulation, all things Alpha to Foxtrot and beyond. And really, Brian, we need to close this by picking our favorite blind bag series and our least favorite. What is your favorite blind bag series from series one to nine? Honestly, I think that I like series six the most. Mm. The weakest is, I don't wanna say series eight just because it's not the most interesting to me. I think in terms of the original ones, series four just hit it out of the park. So many 
cool figures and the AC Cortana might be the best blind bag series figure we've ever got. Over towards the end, I love series nine just because it was pure like luck and chance for me to find that. And my least favorite series, I don't know if it's silly to just say series two. I mean, I know Megabox has only just got started at that point, but it was just sort of color swaps of all of series one. All in all, so many epic series, so many epic figures. Brian, thank you so much for joining me today. Guys, you need to head over to Toro of Ultimate Doom's YouTube channel. Check out his full opinions of all of the Halo heroes. He goes into incredible detail. And that guy is working like a machine right now to pump out Doom reviews. And they're sort of like a mix mash of heavy metal and Halo. I love them. They're some of my favorite videos on YouTube. Check out his channel for all things Halo Mega Bloks. Alpha to Series Foxtrot and beyond next time. I can't wait to join Brian again to delve into the many mysteries of Halo. Thank you very much for joining me, Brian. Don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that merch well, store. Like and subscribe and smash the buttons. Like else. in the comment section. Bye. Life, life is a big mystery. All right, bye, Brian. See you next time. And I guess that's a wrap. Run down every single series. What was good? What was bad? What we learned in between? Thank you for joining me, Brian. And what was Brian. smelly? That's the number one thing. What's the most smelliest? I think they all smell the same.